This project is powered by Kali Open Mini. Okay, so let's start with a first exercise. Let's automate the operation of our door. And as I already told you, the door is controlled by the servo. We operate the servo with the servo right pin. We have to set it to specific port that we connected our servo motor and to a specific position. And this position is individual for each model you build. You have to always check it manually when the door is open and when the door is closed. For me, it is 160 to close the door and 60 to open the door. So let's do some basic manual control on button. A, let's open the door, so let's set it to position 60 and on button B pressed, on button B clicked, let's close it, which means setting it to 160. Let's download it and test it. I press button A and the door opens. I press button B and the door closes. But it is not the best user experience design to have opening of the door at the, <laughs> at the back of the house and the door on the front of the house. So let's make it more fancy and open the door with a specific button that we can create. And I created mine that way. Here inside, I connected this bolt, this one, to the pin uh, P. P3 at the Calliope mini board. So I simply use the crocodile cable to connect this bolt with the pin on the Calliope mini board. And now I can use this block on pin, press down on pin P3 in my situation, open the door. And now by detecting the touch of the specific pin, I can use this as a, as a button. So this bolt turns into an opening door button, but it is tricky. I can, I can use it to open right now, but when I press it again, the door do not close because they only set it to position 60. This button now only opens the door and still I have to close it with the button B. So how to make it open and close with one button? we have to add a variable. Let's create a variable door open, door underscore open. And this variable will be a Boolean variable. It will be only true or false. The door are either closed or open. So on start, let's set door open to value false. The door is closed initially. And now we want to control the door by switching this value between false, true and false. So let's duplicate it. And we want to switch this value by pressing the P3 pin, which is connected to this bolt. So I set it like this. On P3 button press, set the door open variable to, not a specific uh, Boolean value, but to the negative value of this variable door open so each time i press this button it will flip flop between true and false and now with, with a condition if if door is open then set it to position 60 this opens the door and if the door open is false then set it to 160. And here in the cond statement condition, we can simply put the door open variable because it is already a logic statement, a true or false variable. So let's test it like this. And now when I press the pin, the door opens. And when I press it again, the door closes. So these are two methods to control our door that I can suggest as an exercise for your students. One, the most basic one with buttons, A and B, and the second one with, with detecting the touching of, of a specific pin on the Calliope mini board. And the pin is connected to an element of our smart house with a crocodile uh, cable.
Uh, and one thing to, to note here is that this touching detection is a bit finicky at times. It's, sometimes it doesn't work as good as we could, would, would like to expect. It is quite prone to some electrical distractions in the, in the circuit. So keep that in mind that in some specific situation, which, are quite, which can be quite unexpected, the grounding of this whole cir circuitry may not work as intended. And it works best when the computer and the Calliope mini boards are battery operated and not connected to the power grid. And now let's add one last modification to our door exercise. Let's turn on the light when the door is open. And to do this, we will control our NeoPixel module. First, we have to set it up. Set on, on the board start. Set strip to NeoPixel connected to pin C15 on my board. It's connected to C15. And it has four LEDs. And now when the door opens, I want to turn on the light. So set strip color to white and show. And when the door closes, I want to turn it off. Uh, so I set the LEDs to black. We cannot shine the LED in black color. We can simply turn it off. And let's test it. Okay, when the door opened, the light turned on. And when the door closed, the light turned off. And to work further with this idea, we could go on into building some kind of a welcoming sequence after the door gets opened, the, there is some light sequence and the melody starts playing. And I will show you the already made uh, code here. I won't build it right now because uh, it would take uh, too much time. And what happens here? We also detect the pressing of the pin. Let's switch it to p pin P3 and switch the value of a door variable here. And then when the value is true, we call this, uh, this function, this welcome function. And this is the whole sequence of activities that are uh, happening when the door is open. And let's first check how it works. Uh, I downloaded this code. I press the opening button. And as you could see, the door opened slowly. And this happens because of this first for loop here, uh, which iterates for 50 steps and slowly iterates the value between the 160 and 60 with the pause between each step to open the door slowly and then a melody is played in the background and a rainbow pattern is displayed on the no pixel modules which also happens in a loop to give you this um, color fading lines and then after this color sequence goes through, the lights are set to white. And else is when the door value is false, which means the door is closing. So we, again, we iterate slowly the value to close the door. So we slowly close the door by iterating its value and turn off the LEDs. So this is the whole example of a welcoming sequence. You can, of course, modify it anywhere you want and build a nice lesson around this concept.